Hello, and welcome to Urban Health Hotline. I'm DJ Wells of the Urban Health Program at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Over the next several weeks, as has been the case for the last few weeks, you'll have an opportunity to call in and have your questions answered about careers in health care, about educational opportunities that you can pursue at UIC, and about some of the important health and education issues that are facing our community. Remember, this is a call-in show. It's your show. Whenever you have a question about the things we're discussing, please call us at the number that's on your screen. We'll do everything we can to get you on the air with us so that we can answer your questions. We'll open up those phone lines in just a few minutes, um, but the number is there on your screen, 312-738-1060. So think about your questions that you might have for us, and we'll get to those questions in just a short while. Joining me today is Dr. Deborah Umrani. Dr. Um, Dr. Umrani is the director of the Urban Health Program's Early Outreach Program. It's a program that reaches out to our students even before they're ready to go to college to get them thinking about health careers and, and what they should be doing to get ready for college. Thanks for being with us today, Dr. Thank Umrani. Thank you for having me. A little bit later, we're going to hear from one of Dr. Umrani's students, one of her star students from uh, years past who's now uh, about to graduate from college himself. So we'll have an opportunity to hear about some of the benefits of your program. Um, why don't we start off with just the basics, Dr. Umrani. Tell us a little bit about the Early Outreach Program and, and what you do and, and what are some of the components. Okay. The Early Outreach Program is a program designed to help students enhance their proficiency in science, language arts, and mathematics. Those are the three core subject areas that we work with students in. The um, goal is to prepare students so that they can be ready to go into careers in the health professions. Okay, what, what are some of the components? What types of things do you do? Well, during the school year, we actually have enrichment activities for students. They actually come on the college campus at UIC, and they get to work with faculty. They get to work with some of the best teachers in the city of Chicago and the suburbs. Mm -hmm. I've, heard, to, I've heard that about your, okay. your teachers. Great. To learn more <laughs> about um, science. So we have students who, in many instances, might not have a strong science program or a strong math program at their home schools. But when they come to us, we fill that gap for them, and we're actually to help, able to help them do better. We also work with students. Uh, a lot of our students go to places like Whitney Young. They go to schools like... Um, Morgan Park, uh, Jones, and some of the better, Walter Payton, and those are students who also come and they're able to take part of in our advanced science programs mm -hmm. and actually enhance their skills so that they're actually prepared and become accustomed to a lot of the things that a first-year medical student would encounter wow. if they were um, to be a first-year medical student. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it, it's, it's for students in the magnet schools as well as students yes, in the neighborhood from community students schools. from all um, backgrounds they're able to benefit from being in the program outstanding um, now I understand that there's um, a there's a, a summer program that's yeah. kind of intensive and, and right. we're just wrapping that up right now yeah we actually are what happens in the during the school year we actually work with students in sixth grade through twelfth grade and we also work with our college students mm -hmm. but during the summer we actually open it up to students in kindergarten we actually, this past summer, had a couple of four-year-olds who wow. were very advanced. The students, they already know how to read. And they are introduced to the scientific method of critical thinking, and they're introduced to higher-order thinking skills in terms of math. They're learning how to read and to write. And so they, become, they step out going into the school year well ahead of their peers because they've been exposed to a curriculum that is advanced, that is also fun, and that is exciting. One of the things that happened um, this year is we were um, contacted by one of the partners with NASA. Wow. And so we're running a, a, a program that introduces the students to some of the physics, and engineering concepts that students would not even encounter until they were well advanced in high school. And we're working with middle school students for that program. So it's a very exciting program, lots of hands-on things, lots of minds-on things where the students are really, really excited about science. And the best thing about it is that the students learn that this is something they can do, that it is right. not outside of the realm of the possibilities for them in terms of career moves, in terms of uh, areas of study when they're in high school and when they're in college. So that's the wonderful thing about that. And that's so very important because so often 
Um, our students don't think that, that college is something that they should be aspiring to, that mm -hmm. college isn't a place for them. They don't see a lot of folks that look like them on our college mm -hmm. campuses. So this is a wonderful opportunity to give them that exposure. It really is. And then the instructors and the students, the, the mentors, we have college students who serve as mentors for them. They are um, individuals who encourage them to do their best. They are individuals who show them that, look, I've done it and you can do it too. And it's not outside of the realm of possibilities for you. A lot of the students, uh, our students can have a wide range in terms of education for their parents. We have some parents who may have a PhD or a master's degree, but we also have parents, grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. And the, the, the major, major thing they have in common is that they want a better future for the next generation. Right. So they're willing to put their students in programs that they're excited about. The other thing is when you think about kids being in school during the summer, because many of these students, they left school uh, the middle of June and that next Monday they were here. These students have been with us for eight straight, straight weeks of academics, science, math, English language arts, and they are loving every minute of it. Outstanding. So even students who would normally say, oh, I don't want to do this, I don't want to go to school, we have kids who are saying, I can't wait to get back to school because they want the learning to continue. Why, um, why do you focus on the health professions? You, you said before that we're preparing these students for the health professions. Why the focus on the health professions? And, and you mentioned the NASA thing mm -hmm. too. How does that kind of tie in? Well, the focus on the health professions, there's a, a thing called STEM. Mm -hmm. S-T-E-M, and it's science, technology, engineering, and math. And what the colleges have found is that students who are American students are actually falling behind in terms of being right. majoring in those areas. We've heard a lot about that with with all of the programs that are coming down the pike with Obama and, right. and, and all the federal programs. Right, so there's a focus right now for us to really sort of reclaim our own and reclaim the edge mm -hmm. that Americans once had in terms of those areas. When you are proficient in science, technology, engineering, and math, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities for you. It opens up a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of living, and the possibilities in terms of one's income and one's ability to be a contributing pers um, participant in the society are opened up for every student. The, the, the thing that has happened is that the majority of the students who are majoring in those areas over the last few years have been more foreign-born students. And there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. The reality is that American students can do just as well. So that's why there's been a push in the last five to ten years for students to become more proficient in those areas so that they can do it. Now the thing that's interesting in terms of the health professions is that once a student becomes proficient in science, technology, engineering, and math, or any of those areas, they basically have a world of opportunities open to them. Absolutely. They could become a doctor, but they also could become an engineer. They could become a, a research scientist. We focus on the health professions because of the disparity that we find in our inner cities, mm -hmm. that there are not enough health professionals who are culturally proficient to help patients who live in the inner cities so that they can become whole, well, and strong. Right. So our focus is to open up the um, opportunities to the students for them to understand that there, there's more that you can be more than just a doctor, you can be more than just a nurse, right. a pharmacist, that there are a whole host of other uh, career opportunities within each one of those fields. Right. And to let them know about those so that maybe someone doesn't want to be um, a nurse, but they, they're interested in surgery. They could become a surgical nurse. They could become a nurse practitioner where they could have their own practice and take care of students and well babies. Mm -hmm. There are lots of things that they could do. Even in, den in dentistry, we work with the College of Dentistry and we have had our students learning about the kind of research that goes on at an institution like UIC in the area of dental research. And that opened up the eyes of our students. It's not just being a practitioner where you, you know, a clinician, but you can also be a researcher and help to find some of the things, you know, some of the advances that uh, are taking place right now for uh, many people in, in every area of the health professions. And, and it's important to, to point out that the early outreach program is a part of the urban health program. And you mentioned the mission of, of 
addressing the disparities that are in our inner cities mm -hmm. as it relates to, to health care and health care providers and, and folks that look like us right. that are providing care to us. Yes. And, and it's so, I think, very important that mm -hmm. we're teaching our young people that this is something they should be thinking about, that they can be a part of the solution. Absolutely. And if you start t teaching them that now, mm -hmm. then perhaps that solution is, is, is closer than we think it Absolutely is. Absolutely, it can be. Well, and, and, and that leads me to my, to my next question, and that is, you know, we, we hear in education circles about pipeline mm -hmm. programs, and, and, and it would seem to me that this is a good example of that. Oh, absolutely. Pipeline programs are programs where you begin working with students early in their academic careers. Mm -hmm. With us, we work really as early as kindergarten, exposing them to science. Uh, and, and, and learning to think scientifically so that as they move through the pipeline, as they move through their educational experience, that they can consider careers in the health profession, that they will be f proficient, they will be capable of pursuing those careers. Mm -hmm. So a pipeline program is one you start working with students early on and you, you track them to see where it is that they go and you track them and it's very strategic in terms of the educational opportunities, the educational um, situations that you place the students in so that they are on the road to becoming health professionals. Now, I know we've got one of your students here, yes, and so I'm not going to ask you questions about what the students do. I'm okay. going to ask your student what, what kinds of things he did when he, when he got a chance to go through the program. Wonderful. But I am going to ask you, I, I understand that there's a pretty uh, intensive parent Mm -hmm. component to your program and, and and could you tell us a little bit about that yes one of the things that we found out is that every student who is successful in school has parents behind them who are concerned about their children being successful mm -hmm. when parents make that commitment now and I'm not saying that there aren't some kids who make up their minds on their own but the vast majority of young people that's why God gave kids parents <laughs> who, that are there to guide them so that they can be successful these are parents who say they won't take no for an answer right. many of them it's always very interesting they have meetings where they come on Saturdays and they volunteer they actually do fundraising for the students to raise scholarship money for the students they do lots of things for the students 